Hello YouTube, Flight Some Guy here. I am in the CRJ700 at the runway at Homestead Air Force Base in Florida. And what I'm going to do is show you guys how to do an instrument approach in the IFR conditions to get into the ILS. Now this is going to be a two part video. Uh, first part's going to be uh, PowerPoint slides go over the process, documentation, and uh, definitions, review the IFR plate and whatnot or the uh, instrument appro approach plate and the second part is going to be actually flying the approach now this is like my tenth time this thing is a lot harder than it looks even though it looks pretty simple so while we go ahead and go through the slides I'm going to go ahead and get the cockpit set up so we can go ahead and uh, do the flight so without further ado let's hit the PowerPoint presentation hello YouTube welcome to flight sim guys half-assed guide to instrument approaches to the ILS take Ten or some shit. I've been working on this thing forever. Can't get it right. And that's just a PowerPoint presentation. Don't even get me started on flying in the cockpit. All right. So what I'm going to do today is review the various options for approaches to the ILS and IFR conditions. Now I'm not uh, going over how to fly an ILS, uh, an IFR approach. That's not exactly what I'm doing. All I'm doing is showing you the techniques that I use to fly my aircraft and get into the ILS feather so that I can arm the autopilot, arm the approach hole and take me down to the runway using the uh, IFR approach plate. Um, the hard part when you're in IFR conditions is getting into the ILS. It's, it, it sounds simple and it looks simple based on what you see in the approach chart, but it's actually kind of tricky. So I'm going to go over how I do it. Uh, in this case, we're going to review the details on the instrument appro approach plate for Fort Lauderdale International ILS 10R. Academically speaking, that's what we're going to review in this slide. In uh, practice, when I fly this in the simulator, it's going to be runway 9 right. There is no 10 right at Fort Lauderdale in FSX. And uh, I'm going to try and give myself a challenging condition. IFR, nighttime, 2 mile visibility, and a 600 foot ceiling with some rain. See if I can nail that. All right, so options for flying into the ILS and IFR conditions. There's a billion different ways you can do this. If you have ATC support and they have radar, they can give you vectors to the ILS. Just follow the instructions. They'll get you right in there. Tune in the uh, ILS uh, uh, frequency. Turn on the approach hole. Turn on nav and you should be good to go. The FMS, if you have a flight management system, a flight management computer, just go ahead and punch in the approach arm it, stitch it to the rest of your flight plan, and the plane will fly it for you right down to the ILS. Ditto for the GPS. I'll just fly the nat the uh, the lateral profile for you. All you need to do is fly the, the uh, vertical profile and manage your speeds. Now this is the tricky part, flying the approach itself using the approach plate and the nav radios. That's what I'm going to go over today. Require some understanding of the uh, approach plates. This is what we're going to talk about. In detail, um, overview, this gives you all the information you need to fly an instrument approach to the ILS. Um, if you're using radar from ATC, or if you're using ATC support and they have radar, this is good to have, has a, good, a lot of good information, but in reality, you can land without it. So, uh, ditto for the G, uh, GPS and FMC. This plate is good to have, but once you have all these uh, fancy technologies, it's really not needed. You can land without them. Without all of this stuff, this plate is mandatory. All right, let's go over this in detail. This is your typical uh, instrument approach plate. Nothing too complex, not too simple. Let's go over what all of this stuff means. Here you have the runway length and the air, uh, airport elevation. This is good information to know. The longer the runway, the bigger uh, room you have for errors. This is the ILS frequency. Kind of sort of need this, otherwise you won't be able to fly the approach. These numbers right here, these are your comp frequencies in the order that you're going to need them. Now for what we're doing, we won't be using ATC, but if you're flying, say, in the real world, you'll start off with ATIS to get your weather briefing, and you'll have uh, the approach control in your uh, backup. Then once you hit approach control, you can go ahead and swap these two frequencies, talk to approach control while you have the tower in the, in the standby, 
And once you get to the tower, uh, you swap, and then you have ground control in your backup, and so on and so forth. These are your radio frequencies. Good to know. All right. Now, these points right here, these are old school waypoints along the ILS further going to the runway. Bunker, Beezer, Blame, Lori, and Zalal. Now, if you know all about setting up the flight management computer, punching in waypoints and whatnot, in theory, what you could do is take the last waypoint off your star that gets you into this area, punch these waypoints in, arm it, and you're good to go. Then the plane will just fly itself down. We talked about that before. This right here is your minimum safe altitude. This is the altitude you need to be at when you're in this area. Or at the very least, when you start your uh, flight into the ILS further, doing your uh, instrument approach. In this case, it's 2,100 feet above the ground. So based on the surface elevation, you're going to add this number to this number. And that's what you're going to punch into your, alt your altitude setting. This right here are your instructions in case you botch the approach or botch the landing and you have to do a go around or missed approach. You go ahead and set your altitude uh, while you're in here uh, to the missed approach altitude and go ahead and punch in, in your heading hold the missed approach heading. That way, if you have to go around, you'd have to fiddle with that. Okay, now a lot of airports in North America, the big airports, there is a VOR station on the field. That's what this is, 114.4. This is good to know because if you get disoriented or whatever, at the end of the day, you know where the airport is and you have a reference point. So it's always good to know what the um, VOR station frequency is. My tours in all the countries outside the United States teaches me that you're more likely to see an ADF at the end of one of the runways and that's their method of uh, you know, reference for the airport as opposed to VOR stations. By the way, the localizer is located at the foot of the runway. And as you can see, it has the same frequency here, 117.5, 117.5. Now, in this case here, there is another VOR station. It's off the field, a little bit down here somewhere, but it's the DHP of the Dolphin VOR and these lines here represent radials coming out of Dolphin and where they would intercept the ILS going into Fort Lauderdale. In this case you can see 113.9. You can't actually see the symbol because it's blocked off down here but this tells you that essentially there is a VOR station down here and these radials show where it intercepts the ILS. Um, most or many approach plates have at least two VOR stations, if not three. And the first one can be used as a good starting point because you can always know where the VOR station is. Fly to it and use that as a starting point for your approach. That's what we're going to do today. This box right here has final approach information, which is good or good to know. This B's are intercept. That's this one right here. You need to be at 4,000 feet flying heading 096, going down to 3,000 feet at Blaine, which is here, going down to 1,800 feet at Lorry, which is here, and all that good stuff. It also has total distance to the runway from the waypoint, 13.9 from Beezer, 10.7 from Blaine, 6.9 from Lorry, etc., etc. Also has distance in between the, the various waypoints, 3.2, 3.0, 3.9, and whatnot. There's uh, also some uh, additional information you can go ahead and study as needed. Point is, spend some time with these approach plates. At the end of the day, you can figure them out. All right, so assuming you don't have any ATC support or a flight management computer or GPS, just your instruments, uh, how can you fly this? Well, based on how I do it, there's several approaches or there's several uh, options. The first thing you can do, once you're in this area, tune to this VOR, fly to it, and using the VOR station as a reference point, do a flight in the pattern. I have a video on flying in the pattern. Same process works if you're in IFR conditions. It's a little bit tricky, but it can be done. That's the first option. Second option, come down here to the DHP VOR, 
and start your approach. And then once you've armed the uh, the nav radio that's tuned to the ILS, once you see the needle starts to move, just go ahead and make a right turn and fly into the ILS. That's the second way. The third way, which is the one that I like to use, is once you start your approach, arm the ILS to your nav radio, and then once you see the needle start to move and go from one end to the other, that means you've flown through the ILS, then you make a left turn to fly parallel to the opposite direction, right here, 276, and then time your downwind, and then make a 180, the 096, set your nav, set your approach hold, and come on in. I've used this technique many times on many of my ILS approaches. It works very well. All right, so what are the instructions? Um, this is the academic listing of what all you need to do. Truth is, when I try this, I'm going to screw it up or botch it, skip over some stuff. But this is what all the process all right, once, you've, once you determine where you're going to land on, go ahead and get out the approach plate and study it. You don't want to look at the approach plate the first time when you're just about to fly it. You're going to screw something up. It's always helpful to study the approach plate uh, ahead of time. Give yourself 5-10 minutes to look it over. Start your plan. Uh, also, good to remember, depending on the size of the aircraft, the larger and faster the aircraft, you want to start your approach further and further out. I'd say... 17 to 23 miles out for big aircraft 737 and up um, 12 to 15 miles business jet phenom whatnot pistons turboprops and whatnot uh, I'd say 8 to 12 miles don't forget to dial in the airport elevation into the passenger uh, the air uh, the pack system in this case, 65 feet doesn't make a difference, but when you're flying into airports that's uh, thousands of feet uh, above sea level, you don't want the door to blow off when you open it or have a hard time opening it because of the difference in pressure, so you want to dial that in. Slow down. Once you come into this area, um, you want to be somewhere between 200 and 220 knots. You don't want to be too slow because when you make these turns, you could stall and fall out of the sky. That's happened to me a couple of times trying this. On the flip side, if you go too fast, you'll bust your destination uh, waypoints. So you want to slow down so you can, you know, make uh, smooth turns and keep everything in control. Also, when you're in this area, descend to your minimum safe altitude, 2,100 feet. Get your radios in order. In this case, a good idea would be to set COM1 active to the frequency, to the ATIS, to get your uh, uh, weather report and whatnot. Um, and have uh, approach control on standby. You'll also want to dial in DHP, the VOR. We're going to be starting from the south. Have that in NAV2 active. And then NAV1 uh, active you want the frequency for the ILS which in this case when we actually fly it's going to be 108.5 not 111.75 and nav 2 standby you want to have your uh, VOR station at the airport where you're going now obviously you can do it however you want but the point is you want to get your radios all set up so that you won't be fumbling when you're making the flight because remember this is going to be IFR you won't be able to see anything it's very easy to get disoriented Now, once you've intercepted the DHP VOR, once the needle swings around and you're flying away from it, fly one of these headings to intercept the ILS. In this case, we're going to fly 336. And it's going to be approximately 17 miles. I measured it on Skyvector. And your radios will have DME on there. So use that to determine when you pass 17 miles. Also, just keep an eye on the NAV1 needle. Once it starts moving, you're right about here. And once it swings from one into the other, you're over here. Okay, so nav, nav one ILS will come alive. Wait until it swings from one into the other. And then go ahead and make a left turn fly heading 276. That's your quote-unquote downwind. Time your uh, downwind for about 30 seconds. And then 
you're going to do a 180 like this to 096 and that's going to take you right into the ILS. Now by the time you're here and you're coming in the glide slope is going to be way above you. So what you want to do is after you hit nav once you turn in here you're probably using heading hold. Once you're in here go ahead and hit nav the plane will ride itself and center up on the uh, the glide path or the localizer. Then you hit approach hold and what that's going to do is it's going to arm the approach hold when the glide slope once you fly into the glide slope and it starts coming down you know what I'm talking about once it's in the middle it will capture and then the aircraft's autopilot will fly the plane down to the foot of the runway by itself. Now in this case for runway 9R which we're going to be flying in Fort Lauderdale and I don't know why I chose this one this is one of the few runways you'll come across that has a localizer but no glide slope. So in this case I'm going to have to figure out my vertical profile and come down at just the right moment to land. It's a little bit tricky but it can be done because remember your nav 1 will be tuned to the ILS or in this case your localizer and if it has DME capability it will tell you how far away you are. Otherwise you're just going to have to figure it out yourself. <laughs> and don't forget nav 2 is tuned into the Fort Lauderdale VOR. That has a DME. That will tell you how far away you are. And based on that you can tell yourself okay I need to be um, if you're at here you can do the math. You need to be at 3000 feet here. Here you need to be at 1800 blah 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 blah. So you can figure out the vertical profile but normally there is a glide slope and all you have to do is hit the approach hold. It will arm once it's intercepted, it will capture the plane will start coming down by itself. At that point, you'll go ahead and set up your uh, missed approach information. Put in your altitude and then your heading. Once the glass slope centered, autopilot will capture, it will come on down. Once you've captured, go ahead and give it another notch of flaps. Here you should be doing your flaps as you're slowing down. Once you've captured the ILS, um, and the aircraft normally makes uh, some funky noise to let you know that it's captured. Give it gear down and start managing your speed and flaps. Go through your landing checklist. Arm your uh, thrust reversers, arm your spoilers, landing lights on, all that stuff. At a thousand feet you should be at full flaps and final approach speed. Be prepared to turn off the autopilot and land. Once you break through your decision height, which should be your minimums, around 200 feet, in this case, I'm sorry, 600 feet, because that's going to be the, the ceiling of the bad weather. Once you break through that, you should start looking for the airport. If you, uh, if you don't see anything, give it another 100, 150 feet. If you don't have the runway by the time you're at your minimums, which is 200 feet in my case, you want to do a missed approach and do a go around. Uh, but if you see the airport, the runway, just go ahead and line up, turn off the autopilot, and set her down. All right, um, one more thing before we break. Do it really half-assed. That's the American way. This is what inspired me for my half-assed tutorials. Can anyone think of what episode of The Simpsons this is from? This was the episode where the teachers at Barton Lisa School decided to go on strike because they weren't getting paid enough. And Homer said to Lisa, Lisa, if you're not happy with your job, don't go on strike. You go into work every day and do your job really half-assed. That's the American way. And that's the philosophy behind my channel. All right, that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and get back into the cockpit. All right, so we're back here. Um, I have cockpit ready to go autopilots all set up frequencies are all set up in the radio the plan is to take off on this runway come right fly heading uh, about 360 intercept the dolphin VOR which is 113.9 take it up to 7,000 feet after we pass over the dolphin VOR come on down to the MSA 2100 feet uh, come left to 336 to intercept the ILS at Fort Lauderdale nine right uh, frequency 108.5, fly over the ILS, and then make a racetrack U-turn into the ILS and have the ILS take me down to the runway. That is a plan. Sounds simple enough. Let's see if we can do this. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get my V-speeds here. Let's click on that. 
and just click each of these. There. The last time I tried this plane stalled and fell out of the sky because I was too slow when I made my turn to get into the ILS. Hopefully I can do this. It's a lot more difficult than it looks. Alright, here we go. Alright, here we go. Engines at full. Take the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Alright. Take off, rotate. Okay. Positive rate, tap the brakes, gear up. Okay, you gotta watch the angle of your nose. Points up too much, it's gonna stall on you. Alright, come off the gas about 75 percent flaps up one autopilot on heading on altitude on V speed there we go <coughs> flaps up two okay what's wrong with my autopilot come on heading oh yeah I gotta turn it, don't I? All right. There we go. All right. Flaps up. We're looking good on speed. We're looking good on vertical speed. FMS 1, FMS 2, VOR 2. There it is right there. VOR 2, that's going to... The Dolphin VOR. Let's go ahead and turn this. There we go. Come on. There we go. There we go. I actually want to track to that us through nav. Slow down. Getting too fast. All right. We need to be going there. Turn off the heading. Let it track to nav. Okay, we're getting too fast. go heading and we're 17 miles from the DHP the Dolphin VOR so at this point we're looking good we are looking good now you always want to be ahead of the aircraft so once we get to the Dolphin and we are tracking we need to track that uh, heading there we go once we get to the Dolphin VOR this needle is gonna swing around And once that happens, um, we'll switch the navigation to the Nav 1, which is tuned to the ILS at Fort Lauderdale. And then what we're going to do is turn the course needle to 090 to point towards the runway or the runway orientation. And then we're going to keep an eye on the, uh, the localizer needle while we come on down to 2100. 13 miles out. We want to watch our speed. We're flying almost leveled. Just have our nose up a little bit. Getting up to 1200 or 7000. So at this point of the flight, we are doing good. We are doing good. Okay, should be flaps up all the way. Okay, we can go ahead and turn these two off. And we're good right there. Speed is looking good. 
We're approaching 7,000. Let's go ahead and there we go. So we need to come right just a little bit. There we go. Within 10 miles. Now, as you can see, the orientation of the cockpit looks a little bit different whenever it turns. That's Chase Plane doing its thing. And as you can see, I have a nice tiny little cockpit shape going on. Alright. We are almost at 7,000 and within 10 miles of the VOR. So we're, we're looking good. Let's go ahead and dial in our MSA, which is going to be 2100. Oh, it's going to start its descent, which is fine. Um, we're going to take it down to, we'll call it 2200. There. All right. Our needle is getting out of whack primarily because we're passing over the VOR station. Okay, we're getting too fast. Come off the gas a little bit. Alright, we can start coming down now. So let's go ahead and hit vertical speed. And let's go ahead and dial in. Oh, we want to be going down, not up. We'll come down at about 1500 feet per minute. Or 1700. And we're going to speed up as we go down, so let's come off the gas. Okay. And then what we're going to do is switch our nav source to nav 1, which is that. And then we're going to turn the needle to 090, which is east. And we're, going, we're coming way too fast. Okay, I need to idle the engines. There we go. Set this to 090. The other way, which is east, because you want it pointed up with the runway. There. Now we are busting the speed limits. Ideally, what we should do is either shallow out our dive or our descent, or put out the um, the spoilers. Um, Another thing we can do while we're doing this, because we're in heading mode, we can go ahead and switch the nav source back to VOR2 and track this. By the time this says 17, 17 miles, that's when we're going to be flying over the ILS. So what this tells me is I can come off of this. Oops, up, 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 up. Take it down at 1,000 feet per minute. That's going to slow me down. Because remember, the distance between oh shit I'm, I'm going the wrong way I need to be going this way 336 alright there I could have gone straight that it, that simply would have means there's uh, less room in the ILS for when we go to land this way we'll be intercepting the ILS about 20 miles out okay I have to keep an eye on my speed. You have to have sufficient speed if you're going to be flying with the autopilot. There we go. All right. Now, we're right here. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. We're right here. Okay. Miami is right here. Fort Lauderdale is right here. Nine right comes out here. So we're going to be flying right over it. Okay, speed's coming down. Time to bring the engines back to life. There we go. And we want this to say localizer. There we go. We'll keep it right here. Now you want to look at this also. This is your trim. This is the numbers that the autopilot is putting in to maintain the orientation of the nose. Okay, too fast. 
Let's bring the speed back. Back our yoke. We are approaching the altitude, 2200 feet. But at this point, what we want to keep an eye on is this needle right here because that's tuned in to 108.5, which is a frequency for the localizer runway 9R at Fort Lauderdale. Okay, a little bit too fast. Let's bring the engines down to 25%. All right. There's Fort Lauderdale right here, 090, according to this, right here. So we should be crossing over it momentarily. Engines alive. I'm gonna stall and crash like I did last night. Okay, there goes the needle. It is coming across. So, let's come off the gas some more. This time I want to take it down to about 200. I can give it one notch flaps. The slats. Alright. There we go. Alright, so we've passed through the ILS. Now I'm going to make a left turn to heading 270. Keeping an eye on your speed. You lose a lot of uh, energy when you make turns. So let's go ahead and give it some gas. Now we're going, quote unquote, downwind. Now we are 19 miles out from the localizer. Okay, give it some gas. The plane bled off some speed when I made that turn. Alright, we're straightening out. Let's go ahead and start our clock for 30 seconds. Okay, here's where I, I botched uh, my turns last night and crashed. So I'm going to give it some gas. Keep it up over 200. That speed is good right there. It's been 30 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and make a slow turn to 1 to 090. Now this turn is going to help me bleed off some speed to keep me out of the red line. Keeping an eye on my speed, keeping an eye on this needle. It should start centering. Alright, come off the gas a little bit. And there goes the needle. Take it all the way around. There we go. And that should take me right into the ILS. And then once the plane levels, I'm going to hit nav. And that should get me nice and lined up. Alright, so I overshot a little bit. That's fine. Come on over. And there goes another plane right there. Okay. Keeping an eye on the speed. Alright, so we're 17 miles out. I'm a little bit closer, which is fine. This is a smaller aircraft, remember? Alright, let's go ahead and do that. Let's get us back in, and now I need to bring the speed back quite a bit and start giving it flaps. I need to be at approach speed here. Alright, let's go ahead and hit nav. Alright, 
plane should go ahead and get me all lined up. Nice. Other notch of flaps. And before I forget, gear down. Now remember, they have these waypoints along the ILS feather going into 9 right. So I need, I know that at 14 miles, I should be at, uh, well, actually, I'm well within the altitudes. So at 7 miles, I need to be about 1800 feet so I can stay at this altitude for a while I got gear down I need to give it some gas to make sure I don't fall out of the sky let's go ahead and go through my landing checklist armed my spoilers armed the reverse thrusters there we go alright now we're perfectly lined up laterally um, I'm just using the generic bad weather. Put myself up a little bit. I see planes in the sky, but I don't see anything on the ground. Alright. So I'm nice and lined up. I got good speed. Gear is down. Uh, how many flaps do I have? I still have some more flaps to go. I want to keep it right here. Let's go ahead and uh, do my landing speeds. There we go. Alright, there's something wrong. This hasn't moved one bit. Alright, so let's go ahead and do this. Actually, it is moving, but it's moving awfully slow. Let's go ahead and do this. This is a range. It's 10 miles. Alright, I'm within... This ring right here is 10 miles. So it's 5 miles. Okay, start coming down. This localizer, the other end of the runway, so that's a good 1 or uh, 2 miles out. So let's go ahead and... Come down a little bit. Vertical speed. Down. 500 feet per minute should be good. Speeding up. Alright. I'm seeing some lights. 2,000 feet. Yeah, this isn't working properly. And I'm a lot closer than that. Let's do this. Alright, we're coming up on 5 miles. Alright, need to get down some more. There we go. Come off the gas. thousand feet per minute is kind of fast. Now normally if the runway has a glide slope just go ahead and arm your approach hold keep it level and when it captures it will take you all the way down to minimums. Alright we're getting some good visibility on the ground. This is not exactly IFR. I mean I can see a lot better than normal in IFR but it demonstrates the uh, purpose. Also, I've flown this before. There's a big ass building in front of the runway, so I have to be careful I won't crash into it. Alright, got some visibility on the ground. Okay, it's not exactly IFR, but you get the idea. Okay, where are we? Coming up on 5 miles. 1,000 feet. Alright, come off the gas a little bit more. Now the notch of flaps. Alright, there's the runway lights right there. That's much of flaps. And at this point, I can turn off the autopilot. I, there's a the runway, I think. Where's the runway? Oh, wow. I thought I had it in front of me. Where the hell did it go? Well, I'm just going to keep flying this direction. Ah, there it is. And I am two greens over two reds. Perfectly lined up. My speed is good. Flaps full. Get my trim in order. 
Okay, I don't want to lose the runway. Got to keep coming down. Keep coming down. Uh-oh. There we go. <laughs> and there's that building. I'm a little bit too high. Alright, I'll idle throttle a little bit. So I can get down. That's fine. It's a nice long runway. Barely missed that building. Alright, bring the engines back to life. So I fucked up the landing. And I got the approach though. Considering this is uh like the fifth or seventh or twelfth time I've tried this thing. This works for me. I'll take it as a win. Alright. It looks like I used up the whole damn runway. Alright, so where is the runway lights? How do I get off of this damn thing? Um, okay, it looks like there's lights to my left, I think. Ah, there's a taxi light right there. Okay, cool. Taxi line. Get the gas, flaps up. And there's a taxi line right there. And all I have to do is follow the line and I should be good. All right, so for the purposes of demonstrating ILS uh, or IFR approaches to the ILS, that's the best I could do. My apologies. I wanted to do a better job, but, you know, this one was a lot more challenging than planned. And I have no idea where the hell I'm going. Am I going back on the runway? Yep, it looks that way. All right, so you know what? I'm going to call this a win. Let me double check to make sure I hit the record button. And I did. So we'll go ahead and call this a win. Flight Sim Guy here. Hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.